Hi, I'm Dganit Meidan of Ben Gurion University, and today I'd like to talk to you about the topological properties of pumps. So, so far in this course, you have studied about the topological properties of zero-dimensional systems and one-dimensional systems. Today, we'd like to consider a family of Hamiltonians, all of which are gapped, and they are constructed by continuously varying some parameter of the system. This parameter could be, for example, a confining potential or the magnetic flux. But let's think about a concrete example. We'd like to think about a one-dimensional system with a periodic confining, confining potential, and we'd like to use the offset position of this confining potential as the parameter that we wish to vary. Now, the level, levels in each of these uh, local minimas are quantized, and we would like to adjust our chemical potential such that there is a fixed number of levels that is filled within each of these local minima. As we periodically start to move our confining potential, if we do this slowly enough, then the particles would begin to slide. After a full pumping period, where the confining potential has shifted by exactly one period, then we have uh, moved a quantized number of particles from one end to the, of the sample to the other end of the sample. This number, of course, depends on the number of particles that were trapped in each of these local minima. And this system is called the Thaulis pump. Now, in terms of topology, a pumping period corresponds to a one-dimensional cycle in parameter space. There is a phase, accumulated phase that is associated with this path. It has a geometrical path, part, um, dynamical part, and a topological part. The topological part of the phase is discrete. It has to do with the ability to shrink this path onto a single point. Now, since the accumulated phase along a single point is zero, then if we can do this, if we can shrink our original path onto a single point, we say that any pumping properties of the system are not topologically protected. Conversely, if for some reason this cannot be done, then we say that the topological properties, the, the pumping properties of this system are topologically protected and distinct from a, non, from a trivial pump. So if we want to now construct a physical pump, we would like to open our system and to connect it to some leads or probes. A non-trivial pumping cycle would correspond to the transfer of charge or spin to or from the probes. Now, this requires a zero energy state to appear sometime along the cycle in order to allow for this charge or spin to relax into the leads. But our family of Hamiltonians is gapped for every value of this continuous parameter. So the only place where this zero energy state could appear is at the very end of our insulator. And this shows the intimate relation between the pumping properties and the, the appearance of edge states. Let's go back to our pump. As we vary the, the offset potential by exactly one period, there would appear a vacant minima at the very end of the system. This vacant minima is, in fact, our edge states, and it allows for particles from the lead to jump onto our system. So how do we calculate the topological invariant? Well, in fact, there's a very simple way of doing that, and also that makes use of the bulk edge uh, correspondence that you've studied, a little bit like the, what we did in the Majorana wire. So as we argued, the pumping is related to, to the appearance of edge states along the pumping cycle. If we now would like to perform a scattering experiment by sending electrons from the leads to scatter off our sample, then we expect that the phase shift of these scattered electrons would be sensitive to the appearance of edge states at the very end. So, in fact, every time an edge state crosses the chemical potential, the phase of these scattered particles gets shifted by pi. And every time a non-trivial pumping cycle is completed, the phase of these scattered particles gets uh, winds by a, a, an, an integer multiple of 2 pi. So there's a mapping between the circle of, in parameter space corresponding to our pumping cycle and a circle that the phase of the reflection matrix performs along this path. And this, pump, this mapping actually is associated with a topological index, which essentially counts how many times has the phase of the reflection matrix wind around zero during a single pumping cycle. Because edge states, as we said, are associated with a 2 pi phase shift, then this also counts the number of edge states that appear within a single cycle. So why is this winding protected? Why can't we just deform our pumping cycle back to a point? Well, to do that, we would need to take the amplitude of our reflection matrix and continuously shrink it down to zero. But there is charge conservation. 
If the scattered particles are not back reflected, they must be transmitted. But if they're transmitted, the system is no longer insulating, and we would like to think about a system that is insulating at all moments. Namely, if we want a system that remains insulating throughout the entire cycle, the reflection amplitude must stay one throughout the cycle, and that means that our winding of any winding of the phase is topologically protected. So we can use this winding invariant, in fact, to characterize pump. It's also a very useful way of characterizing these Hamiltonians because it's much easier to calculate this winding invariant than it is to calculate the bulk invariant, because essentially all you need to know is what happens at the very end of your sample. Let's see a bit more details now. <laughs> 